R_P yeah yes so (uh) what my role [ah] is actually to help you know my colleagues you know (uh) in R_P mentor them help them to engage industry in (uh) in special projects such as (uh) okay [lah] you know competitive grants (uh) consultancies (uh) you know tech transfers and all these things (uh) can be staff led or student led so basically projects with students with staff (uh) they pay us money or we use grants with the government okay so I help them a lot to get all these projects done [lah] okay so a bit of R_P in case you do not know where R_P [ah] it's just one stop away from J_B okay ya so right now with the new the 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 sultan just came these few days right ya so we are very close to (uh) to (uh) (uh) #iskandar# anyway ya so one stop away so we are in the north and primarily when we teach [ah] we use problem based learning as well as other (uh) strategies [ah] such as good so we really emphasise our teaching techniques it's not like we teach just teach [ah] so there's a certain way of teaching ya so we use problem based learning interactive seminar cognitive apprenticeship et cetera so there's a certain pattern when we (uh) when we teach our lessons okay so so what about since we talk data science right so there are many definitions [ah] I remember last time like ten years ago okay when I ask my colleagues what is data science my okay by the way my my background is in sports science okay not not in (uh) computer engineering or or what you call computer science I'm in sports science pedagogy so more of social science but I play around with data science okay so I'm so I'm speaking from that experience [ah] so I'm not engineer I'm a more (uh) 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 what you call social scientist you know pedagogist in that sense so when I ask my colleagues [ah] from the computer science or school of informatics what is data science !wah! they come up with some definition that was eight years ago but now a lot [ah] they they change the definition in fact eight years ago they can't come up with something (uh) concrete so at the end [ah] you know data science is actually just a tool only [lah] at the end of the day ya and it's (uh) in involves all these different topics that you have over here ya because in the new in this new world it's very complex everything it's not you solve one thing [ah] it's not about just (uh) (uh) statistics it's not just about (uh) data engineering it's everything put together you need to put everything together to solve it but I quite like this one hacker mindset essentially what it means is that when you do all these things you must make sure (uh) you must leave no stone unturned or think out of the box literally everything like C_S_I you know you must really be flexible in thinking (uh) when you try to solve using data science so it's just a means and end [lah] okay so so it's just a tool my friend always tell me [ah] in school of informatics [ah] it's like you have a beautiful car but where's the direction okay you need people to tell you where's the direction the car can only travel A to B you need someone to drive it or you know the vehicle vehicle commander to tell you where to go [lah] so it's just a means only a car what is the end so in this case the end is actually (uh) preventive health [lah] and in health okay just like in industry four point zero very big [ah] now you have the metaverse very big so health also very big preventive health also very big [ah] they have primary secondary tertiary but for today [ah] I'll just share with you just only on what you call the healthy lifestyle [lah] basically how you eat you know how you actually (uh) (uh) do your activities in such a way that it will help you in your health fitness and wellness (uh) status okay like osteoporosis blood pressure you know (uh) di~ mu~ muscle dysfunction et cetera all these things actually can use all these things to help you to monitor it okay so there are many ways to do it I can like go into very technical (uh) (uh) aspects of sharing like in the you know those (uh) conferences or I can actually share with you (uh) like a story but I think I'll just do something in between sharing with you a a technical story [ah] so tell you some story so the first story I want to share with you will be we did something [lah] okay how we can use data science in !wah! like very complicated ground reaction forces (uh) during treadmill running essentially okay what it means [ah] is like this you know we encounter 
forces when we walk uh, every day. So what it means is we will get injured. In fact, uh, we get injured a lot. Uh. So lower limbs injury is one of the most commonly reported injuries when uh, we get older. Uh. Uh, lower back pain, knee pain, uh, ankle sprain, etc. So it's very common. And the way to really analyze it is really to quantify it. Uh. That's the best way. And this is what they use directly, oh, these instruments they use. There's the other way where a doctor asks you a few questions, but you know, qualitative, uh, what we call the like, consultation has its limitations. Uh. Direct is the best. Okay, then they may not want it to be so bulky. They can also wear you know, sensors. I think as engineers, you know, like, uh, they try the inertia measurement units, you know, accelerate, accelerometer, etc. And also they use indirect methods, just using computer visions only, just cameras. Uh, wow. So instead of this, you can just use this. These are like proof of concepts along the way. Yeah. So from very expensive to probably just using only two cameras and a bit of programming, you can actually uh, quantify certain movements. Okay. So in terms of machine learning, usually the use case uh, is they use neural network. Okay, neural network. To use it, but there are also other common, you know, you do programming, there are other common algorithms like, like random forest, linear regression, uh, what call the uh, SVM, etc. There are many, many uh, other neural, I mean, machine learning techniques which they don't uh, explore or haven't explored yet. So there's a question over there. Also, in machine learning, the other th thing is. Big data. Wow, you need a lot of data before you can, what you call, build a model for analysis, right? And that one takes a lot of time, a lot of resources. So one of the question is, can we use lesser data? La? But the question is also, lesser is how much lesser? So what we did is, we systematically, you know, try to investigate la, using, you know, uh, smaller data sets, also looking at different machine learning algorithms to do it. So this one I think probably you can, you can understand now like when things are a bit more complicated, when it's complex, uh, okay, the business value when you try to implement it is very little because it's so hard to implement, so hard to actually time consuming to get large data sets. But if it's complexity a bit lower, then the the business value can be a bit because it's easier to implement. But the question is, how much smaller is it? Uh, 1 million data sets versus small data set like 10, 20, 100, 2,000, 3,000. So we did a little project over here. Like, not a little project, a project. Yeah. But as you can see, yeah, when we do the project, we literally have to measure a person in an authentic situation. Uh, so we have camera system, we measure the walking, and the aim is actually at the end, you take away the cameras, take away the, say, the force transducers, and you just only, you know, at the end, just look at only the, you know, uh, marker's position. And we want to predict your, uh, what you call, uh, uh, actually, forces in your different joints. And if you do machine learning a bit, like we did a 60, 20, 20 split. Like. So modeling, so we need it, we will actually uh, keep changing within this portion here. Uh, we'll tune it, okay? The best model, then we'll test it, okay? So, but, okay, so what we did was, you can see the shape, the actual shape of the ground rupture forces. You can see the little brown, the, the, this one, uh, very light, shaded uh, line and the predicted ones are the dotted big circle that is this one two three four it follows very closely up to the actual one the only one that's way off is this one svm okay just so not all uh, but many can actually be used to actually trace back the actual uh, forces uh, which is very hard in the past to predict and if you are familiar with uh, what we call analysis, this is one of the standards they use in clinical trials uh, that uh, blend and element plot. So it's within 
very reasonable uh, error in that sense. Okay, so over here, you know, in machine or data science learning, machine learning, there's this thing called uh, overfitting. So, okay, RMSC basically is like the standard, the root mean square error, like standard deviation, which is, well, uh, about 0 0.089, just to start, cut the story short. Uh, you know, over, overfitting is a phenomenon when, uh, you know, when you actually build the model and you fit the model and it becomes a bit biased. And the question is, if you were to use a model to test some external data, how does it perform, okay? So over here, you can see that it does have a bit of, you know, uh, what you call the overfitting phenomena, but still the error is like less than one body weight, less than 0.1 body weight. Huh? And R squared, if you're familiar, R squared, notice it's very high, 0 0.9, 4, 9, 7, 3, and maybe 0, 6, 1, 1. But random forest and neural network seems to be very good huh? in terms of accuracy. And in terms of lag, you know in sickness when you actually uh, what you call uh, uh, s estimate it. Sometimes the signal might be, you know, although you may get very almost a similar shape, but the shape is actually off the timing. Okay, it may be about two or three milliseconds off before, faster or slower. But in this case, it's exactly the same. Right? So it's shown over here that it is fairly good. Right? and fairly uh, feasible to use machine learning techniques to predict forces. So these are some norms that we see uh, in other studies. So in our studies, we found it to be, you know, like the root mean square error is 0 0.089. In other studies, it's 0.118. The lesser it is, the better. Uh. So ours is actually, in our experiments, it's uh, much, okay a bit much better like, than what we have found in uh, 2019 in that study. And in terms of R, the correlation, other studies is 0 0.813. We found over here, not R, but R square, is 0998 or 0 .9, 0 0.973. So it shows that, you know, it's quite, quite promising. Uh. We're not saying that it confirmed the work, but at least in this proof of concept that we have, we found it to be quite promising. So what it means therefore is, you know, using cameras and only software only, without all the bells and whistles, with a cut cost, of course it's more convenient. And what it means therefore at the end uh, is you can actually like, walk outside, use your laptop or your, uh, maybe your tablet or your phone, you can literally analyze your gait. In fact, nowadays, what they do is they go beyond measuring the forces. Uh, they will measure also Parkinson's disease at what stage you are. So the possibility is there. So over here is something that we have done, like a proof of concept uh, at the end of the day. Okay, F proof of concept meaning that we have not commercialized it yet. Uh, that's all. So it's just a proof of concept. And it has been published, okay, in uh, the... Uh, Society of Biomechanics in Sports. Okay, we have actually published this um, this uh, piece of work. The next thing I want to share with you is actually another story. It's on variables. Uh. So variables, I think, yeah, something you can really relate to. So in the good old days, variables, they will say, oh, uh, too obvious, you know, uh, too expensive, cumbersome. What about if you don't have all these things and just a watch? able to tell all these things. So that was the problem, state, you know, problem statement uh, that we had. That means we try to solve it. Uh, just use the watch and tell you everything. Is it possible? So these are some stories. Uh, but before that, just to share with you, uh, variables can be your glasses. Uh. We are talking about in the 1800s glasses. Then we have small little watch like this as a, as a variable. Uh, you wear it, I believe, as a necklace. Okay, then you have this apertures, that, that small, literally, should be by, in China, I guess. Okay, then, 
slowly we have Sony, you know, and we have exoskeletons. We also have, of course, now Apple Watches, but also variables can be your this vibrant shoes uh, that looks like your feet, like this, right? And just to share with you, in RP, how we deal with all these things is that there can be many things in the whole productization process, okay? We will just focus on evaluation and development. So in terms of evaluation, it means that we want to really see whether is it valid or not. I just wonder in your actual, uh, what you call, uh, uh, cost, they'll tell you how ready is it TRL, you know? In the TRL, there's like six and seven. Is it uh, your, when your product is ready, is it validated in a simulated environment or is it in a real environment? So over here, we really will use methods to test it, okay? And then at the end, it's okay, we will develop it further to make sure that it's even ready, more ready uh, to be commercialized. There's a difference, uh, you can actually say, oh, this is ready, but when you want to commercialize, it's another ball game altogether. Uh. Yeah, because you make sure double confirm, triple confirm, actually many, many times confirm that it's okay before you can actually uh, go into production. So anyway, so over here, our role is to really make sure that it's valid, ecologically valid at the end of the day. And it's important. Why? Because Fitbit, very good, right? They also got sued, sued you know? There was a suit, suit against them. Then someone sued them because they overclaim. Vibram also, that shoes, okay? They say, oh, when you, your feet is, your leg is injured, you wear it, it will actually help to, you know, reduce your pain. So in some cases, when you wear it, your pain will be even worse in some cases. So don't overclaim. Uh. Just like Panadol may be good, but there are some, when you eat it, may not work. Sometimes there might be some allergic uh, reaction to it. Okay, so in this sort of testing that we have, we make sure what we claim is right. Okay, like now Fitbit you notice, okay, now you know what, uh, if you open the box, you'll say, the heart rate that you see, okay, is just an indication. If you want to use it for therapeutic heart exercises, please consult your doctor or use better, more accurate equipment, okay, they'll tell you. And they say, Fitbit, Sometimes it may not work. They actually put a clause there. Last time, they did not put it. Vibram also. Nowadays, there's a clause over there. They will say that uh, although it may help you to uh, reduce your injury, but see your doctor before you wear it. Yeah. But the theory behind it is actually when you do this, when you wear this, you actually run tiptoe or forefoot. Okay, like this. Okay. Uh, but when you do that, you put extra strain on your calf. Uh. So those who have actually calf injury, you wear this, it might even make it worse, potentially. Okay? Yeah. But, of course, those who actually run on your heels, no, normally when you run, we always run on heels, uh, most of us. 70% of us run on heels. The other 30% run forefoot or midfoot. Okay? If you run the other way around, you run on heels, uh, then probably, and your knee injury, probably it may work, okay? That's the theory behind it. So it may not work depending on what sort of uh, foot drop pattern you have. That's the theory. So you only know when you do clinical human trials uh, on it. Yeah, so in RP, we only focus on lifestyle and uh, preventive health is one, but the other vertical is chronic disease and aging, but powered by all these uh, variables, the X, all the IT stuff, and analytics. Okay, so we partner a lot of people. Uh, so based on all these uh, experiences, okay, we actually later on, I'll share with you, we go into our uh, CET programs. Okay, but more of this later. Uh, to help us with this, we just don't do in a simulated lab at all. These are human real labs. So let's say in sports kitchen, we literally go in and cook something. So when you have health assessment, we literally go in and help people to assess their blood pressure, their balance, you know, etc. Yeah. So also like health promotion or physical activity lab, we literally show them 
how you can actually do an activity. Not necessarily must be those Olympic style kind of activity, but we do activities like for old folks, you know, stand up, sit, I mean, uh, uh, sit down, stand up, walk, things like this. And we also have a simulated home in the HDB for elderly for them to walk around safely, okay? And also to help them to identify, you know, things that are what you call dangerous, like sharp corners, you know, things like this. So we have a lot of very authentic uh, scenarios based labs where we do our evaluations. Okay, so one of which is actually swimming, just to share with you about swimming. Swimming is actually a lifestyle and we know that you know nowadays we can measure your heart rate already. But another aspect of it is actually the forces on your hands. Is something missing, uh, so there's a gap over there. As an engineer, okay, that would be something that one of my colleagues is very interested in. Okay, so in the past, how do you measure forces? Really using robotic arms. Uh. So he did a PhD using robotic arms. But now in RP, he's trying to translate this into actual hand. So he did lots of experiments, he came up with formulas, and he has come up with very accurate, quite a very, very accurate model uh, where we partner. Japan, Japan Institute of Sports, our Singapore Sports, as well as uh, our swimming association, Amping Xiong, lah. that time was Amping Xiong. Okay, okay, so you can see these are various things that we have. So swimming is in 3D, uh, very uh, interesting, also quite complicated. We brought a very accurate model as I mentioned, but the next step is actually to try to productize it. So in order to product, productize it, uh, we have to put all the formulas and try to make it more streamlined. So machine learning is one way that we are going to do it. And the other way is actually on the, just to share with you, is to put it on your gorgeous uh, as a swim. How do we get the feedback to the swimmers once you've gotten the analysis? So it's through the gorgeous and, and if, if they appreciate, uh, it cannot be wireless in water, you can do wireless, yes, you wire it. And one way to do it is, of course, to wear a suit nah, at the end. I mean, those, uh, what you call, uh, uh, yeah, basically you know, those, those sharp fins, suit, uh, etc. So that you can hold the wires and the batteries, for example. So more for recreational swimming, swimming uh, because in competitive swimming, you're not allowed to wear all those, uh, all those things uh, because it has been shown to show unfair advantage for the swimmers. We also do variables like socks like this. Yeah, we studies uh, and we've done it with uh, this Scandinavian university. Can't pronounce it. Uh, Givastia. We also do it in UK. It's a collaboration and Sheffield Harlem Uni and with NTU as well. So we did something like this, but we use uh, data science to analyze it. Okay, but something more interesting is this one. More Okay, variables. Okay, the first one is actually stress. You know, yeah, you hear, uh, uh, I can mention stress with variables. Okay, everybody says that. But stress is very specific, uh, stress. Uh, for example, too much stress is no good, too little stress also no good. Uh, must be just right. And also, let's say, in, in, when you want to study, right, too little stress, you sleep. Too much stress, you cannot take it. Must be just right. But but you want to go for competition, like karate, uh, wushu or whatever, things like this, right? Yeah, your stress cannot be too little, must be really very high, so that wow, you're ready to siam, you know, here and there, and then punch and, 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 and attack. So the stress is even higher. So it's very contextualized, okay? So you must know for each different person, each different activity, there are different optimal stress level. In uh, sports science, we call it in the zone, uh, in the zone. Okay, and we are able to calculate that. In this particular one, it's about drivers. So you must know the particular stress the driver must be in, so as to avoid in, uh, accidents. Uh, this one. But we also have, right now, what we're doing is stress in students, uh, varying variables, to identify how stressful they are at different times of the semester. Like beginning, very happy, right? Middle, a bit stressed because must hand up work, then 
at the end, exam. Theoretically, it's supposed to be more stressful. So, we are trying to study and how to identify this and let the counselors know and whether they want to do any interventions. So, this is one aspect. Huh? The other one is this one. Okay, look close. Yeah, diabetes. Okay, so we also developed something proof of concept. Just variables to do it. Apple is also trying to do it. Huh? The difference is Apple the one to tell the world how they do it. Huh? And even they do it, maybe it works only on Apple only or fit it only. And you see, for us when you do this, the whole world can do it, not just work with us, we just calibrate according to your hardware. So we have come up with a proof of concept. We have been given a grant to do it and we are working with a few people, huh? a few companies. On that for example uh, so the other one is on wellness okay so this one is about core temperature very simple one uh, not different from surface temperature core temperature is actually your rectum temperature so we we'll able to come up with a set of uh, algorithms by just measuring your your what we call uh, signal level the PPG the LED uh, color the signals uh, differentiation we were able to calculate core. Not only this, we actually have gone on to measure other things uh, like blood pressure. We have also, of course, gone on to measure your, the way called the VO2 max, your metabolic expense uh, equivalent. We also went on to measure your SPO2 as well during the COVID. I'll share a bit more later on, uh, the bigger picture. Okay. Now, just have a look at the stress one. Okay. Have a look, yep. hopefully, See that. This is what you do. Excessive stress increases the risk of cardiovascular diseases. Traditionally, the salivary cortisol has been extensively used to measure stress level. However, this laboratory testing is not easily accessible to the public. As a result of this, there is a surge of needs to explore a more convenient and less costly method to measure stress, such as using photophlipismography PPG technology. Republic Polytechnic's wireless stress monitoring system consists of a wrist-worn wearable device based on the PPG technology. The wearable device picks up pulse signals from the user. The pulse signals are then transmitted to a mobile application for analysis using the algorithm developed by Republic Polytechnic. The stress level is then presented using color zones for easy interpretation. Users may continuously monitor their stress levels. The system offers a complete solution to monitor stress levels of users with a simple wearable device and easy monitoring. Contact us today for <laughs> more information. Yeah. So here is an example that we have done uh, from, from start to end, conceptualization all the way to, to proof of concept. Uh. So what is left is of course for companies to come and uh, use it and put it into their system. So you can imagine last time, this, this was done actually five years ago. At that time, they haven't thought of it. But now you can see so many of those watchers, they offer this. You measure this, I monitor your wellness status, your stress status, etc, etc. So it's something that we have done. And I think we are in the right direction uh, to partner you know, companies who want this sort of evaluation or this sort of, uh, how you say, uh, off the shelf. Uh, uh, what we call features that you have, like SpO2, stress, di uh, uh, glucose, uh, sleep patterns, etc. So this is one process I want to show you, share with you what we do. Uh, I mean, as far as data science from the start, we actually have proof of concept, you know, then we actually develop the uh, intellectual property, and then we partner the company before commercializing it, and you can see like, who we partner with. So Activate is the one that does the Singapore 360 uh, walk, uh, the one-step challenge. Okay, KK Hospital, of course. Uh, it's because when you do all these things, our partners must be relevant. Uh, so by glucose, you must have a clinical partner at the end of the day. Yeah, and at the point in time, variables 360 
uh, variables activate was one of the most prominent ones uh, that they that they uh, what you call uh, uh, that's happening in Singapore, especially with the uh, what you call the national step challenge. Okay, so this is one cycle. So notice this is for glucose, but while doing it, we also discover something we can do with SpO2 also. You know the things that we do because it was from those signals down there, the PPG, the LED signals. We notice that we can also extend it to SpO2 and we came up with an intellectual property for this for SpO2 okay, just, just to share okay so at the end of the day cut the story short you can see we have a whole range of things like blood pressure for wellness SpO2 glucose uh, metabolism VO2 max in health sciences we measure that also stress what has all these things in common they are all very bulky uh, you want to measure 24-7 wow like this this one, imagine you put something on your finger 24-7 Nobody wants it This one, if you are diabetic, every day you have to prick, prick, prick And of course, VO2 max, usually the low standard, you run on treadmill You know, you go for stress test right in the hospital, check out Yeah, you have to wear all these things Wow, imagine how bulky it is Stress, wow, notice, it's quite the, uh, quite the, uh, what you call Not that easy, wow, you have to measure this, then it must feedback to you so it's very complicated but imagine all this just can be done literally uh, with one watch in fact that's what's happening okay but the fact is that when you ask those watch companies they will never tell you so we come up with something for the industry if they want they can work with us and we can we can actually work with them to calibrate their devices straight away so the thing is Imagine, once again, you ask Fitbit, can you pass us your blood pressure thing? They say no. Even I pass you, cannot work. So Fitbit want to put in Apple, Apple cannot. If you want to ask Apple's algorithms, very likely, not if they want to share, most likely it's only for Apple. But ours is, is like open source universal. Uh. We can use it, just do a bit of calibration, we can do it. And... The next thing what you can do is we can commission they can commission us to do it so that they own the IP or we license the IP to them, let them uh, use it for a certain period, uh, etc. Or perhaps to help them to evaluate. Okay. So all this uses data science. Uh, and as a summary, what we do is our philosophy, our principle is to validate and then to actually use this uh, knowledge uh, and put it into the variables in terms of industry collaboration so that the community can benefit from it but of course since you are here today uh, skills future okay the knowledge that we gain from all these things are uh, experiences like wow goes goes to where does it go back to training that's a question right then of course the question is is it happening Answer is yes, lah. Of course, you can see, if you do type in Google, you can find data science is happening. But in RP, it is definitely happening, and we do not just do a course just on data science and machine learning. We do it in the context of specialist diploma in sport science and wellness, lah. So sometimes, like what I say, you may know something about machine learning or, or maybe industry 4.0. Uh, however, you may want to know what which space or domain you want to uh, go into okay so in this case we have one that is in sports science and wellness because as i mentioned uh, the health space uh, is very big uh. i mean uh, logistic very big also uh, urban farming also very big but health also very big just to share with you digital health alone uh, is like 200 billion dollars by 2025 Logistic or what you call supply chain 2025 is about 50 billion on it and then maybe urban farming up and rising 2025 is also about 40 billion world market now. so you can see health just digital space alone now, digital health space alone is 200 billion now. so it's very big so even with this it's a very big area already so we, we have this power cross you'll notice that this one 
it's more catered to SMEs or like you know a small outfit company to uh, you know the, the machine learning techniques uh, is just based on that just like teaching right when you tutor somebody one-to-one -one tutor okay tutoring you use certain effort but when you want to teach a class of 40 your effort put in is even more uh. and then if you want to do what you call webinar for a class of 40 you do even more but for this one it's more like tutoring you know one or two people only this one but then you say what happens when it's a bigger audience we also have an uh, upcoming in RP this is a stackable profession mm -hmm. where you can choose a stackable choosing you can choose fintech you can choose urban farming you can choose uh, a lot uh, what we have as uh, logistics supply chain you know we try to grow series of uh, GO yeah, grow RPA grow uh, whatever so we have very interesting stackable uh, components leading to uh, certificates yeah in this area and of course more to it is <laughs> you can come <laughs> and see, maybe uh, since you only want to be <laughs> going to try and take I pass this to you <laughs> yeah 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 we are not trying to sell that but basically just to share with you the knowledge that we have yeah we will always put it back into our normal students program as well as all these part-time uh, programs as well yeah and we this is the easiest low-lying things that we do uh, there are other ways to learn uh. if you have a company on your own you can work with us on the project like on the job training time they want a bit hard to visualize but during on the job training you learn how to actually uh, I, will, I wouldn't say learn how to program uh, you know how to program how to actually choose the right program the right pipeline to commercialize at the end of the day yeah what's the difference between structuring diploma in the front of the and the other one here what's the difference between the structuring diploma and this oh okay okay so this okay this one is leading to certificate only that one is really leading to a diploma but of course uh, so in terms of that uh, so the other one is the diploma really <coughs> you get a diploma uh, in this area sport science and wellness you get diploma the other one is you get a certificate saying, saying that you are trained in stackable uh, modules uh, like like you are trained in python for fintech uh, uh, maybe uh, what we call R programming in uh, in uh, what we call logistic yeah so that one so you have a series of stackable but it's very thematic uh. so this one they call it the uh, in this case maybe it's called the certificate program in applied artificial intelligence a thematic like so, under so NUS the then you have all the different things that you do so, so we need to diploma. I mean, oh setable for this one they are trying to oh, it's upcoming so we do not know <laughs> uh, we don't know you yet but usually if enough you know Liawa, then they say it becomes a diploma oh. they, they can actually curate it to become a uh, diploma in fact we also have one but it's not like so curated it's really we have a sorts uh, what we call a uh, data science diploma in R programming something like this okay so it's really just programming but over here this one is uh, you know more applied la. they try to apply like programming for fintech etc whereas the other one uh, the aim is actually not to do machine learning but how to use how is what science or wellness how does the role of machine learning you know uh, play but we do hands-on you literally learn how to do it and then you're supposed to at the end come up with a program to help promote uh, wellness for example or oh, in other cases uh, they also show you you know a list of uh, variables apparatus you know and you say oh how you can use to help in your health promotion and your patches you know we have uh, uh, braces you know things like this you have exoskeletons to help them to do their job safely so this is the, of the many things that we do lah. in addition to telling you the, the principles of of uh, Sports medicine, yeah, in that sense. Okay, <laughs> just in time. Hello, so so yes.
we have uh, just <laughs> uh, yeah, come, come. So, yes. So, uh, this is uh, not we are not selling anything. Okay. Just happened that <laughs> yeah, if you're interested in uh, sport science learning, yeah. So we have actually like <laughs> in time for the end, but just for the uh, what do you call. But since you are here, okay, it took the effort to come just to share with you lah, data science, what, what we have. So what I've shared just now in the past actually 41 minutes is how data science actually helps in preventive health. Lah. So what I've done is uh, I shared stories you know, behind it. Pardon me because there might be a next slot. Lah. So I have to just strictly summarize give you the, 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 the gist of it. So data science, okay, I think you roughly know lah, it's like artificial intelligence. But I see it as just a means to the end. It's a tool only. A tool only. So what is the end? It helps you in preventive health. Okay, and in preventive health there are many things, uh, primary, secondary, tertiary, time. Very big health, you know very big. But I only focus just to share with you through some stories on uh, on uh, healthy lifestyle. Uh, okay. The medical one I leave it to we are not medical. And by the way, my background is not in medicine or or data science that uh, I'm into uh, uh, pedagogy and sports science, exercise science. Okay, so I share with you through the perspective of of a sports scientist. You know, uh, yeah, in that sense, not as a data scientist. So stories. So I share that uh, I've done things on what you call injuries. How to use data science to quantify injuries. Yeah, because when you want to monitor injuries in the past, you see a doctor, they interview <coughs> you. But now, with data science, we can literally okay, uh, use what you call, uh, so, so we went through a series of tests to confirm its validity. You just have to use a camera, and as you walk, we literally can analyze your movement in terms of measuring your underlying forces on your joints because at the end of the day injury happens when there's too much forces uh, that's happening and you can't tell over here we can literally quantify estimate the forces on your legs and it's important uh, because as you walk the forces they encounter is almost two times your body weight or when you run it's almost three or four times your body weight so what does it mean if you have 80 kg so four times your body weight will be 320 kg. So each time you hit, imagine a 320 weight is on your leg. And in a typical person, uh, there are 10,000 steps a day. So imagine I throw a 300 kg on your knees 10,000 times a day for weeks, for months, for years. And injuries always happen, not suddenly, uh, overuse injury, okay, overuse. So it's important, we can measure it. It's just a tool to help you to measure it and let the doctors, physiotherapy, decide what they want to do. So another story I'll tell is actually variables uh, that we have. So very bulky, traditional variables. Uh, we just have to use watch the name. So a bit of pass. These are some variables that we do. Uh, even apertures. Okay. Yeah, it's a variable on your brain, right? Yeah. Okay. And then of course with Sony during our time, yeah, I can see the, your like my era. <laughs> yeah, Sony. But nowadays they use exoskeletons, you know, and all you know, and even what you call the vibrant shoes. These are shoes uh, that looks like feet. And well, in the at the end of the day, all this must be produced, right? So what we focus on is actually evaluation and development. And in terms of Evaluation, validation, that's what we do. It's important. Uh, because at the end, when we make any claim, we must make sure that it is ecologically valid. That means it must be authentic situation. Uh, it cannot be simulated. It must be in a real, almost near real environment. Using humans, okay, that's the best thing. And we do a lot of human testing. We don't do clinical trials, we do human trials. Okay. So we have a ethics board in RP to do it. So yeah. So why am I gonna do this? To avoid being 
sue uh, sued by, by other people like Fitbit, you know, sue. I mean there was a suit against them. Yeah. Because they sort of like overclaim. They now say what are the different uh, exceptions. Uh. So nowadays if you see a watch, uh, they say, oh, our watch is only indicative only. Sometimes it may not measure. You know, please consult your, your physician for 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 you know for exercise prescription. They will say that. In the past they didn't uh, because of learning from here. Same thing for the shoes. They say you wear the shoe, uh, wow, your leg injury will reduce. But there are many who have leg injury, they wear the shoe, their injury got worse. Okay? Why? Because there are certain conditions where you cannot wear the shoes. But Vibram never say. They don't say it's true for you. So but there are people, at least 150,000 uh, are not happy, they got worse and they sue they, they sue the company. So at the end it means that you need to validate. To do it better, so in RP we focus really on, uh, you know, a lifestyle. Yeah, powered by variables uh, okay. and we partner a lot of people over there. So at the end of the day, we do a lot of uh, experiments using our lab. We have a lab now there. So when we do it, it's not in a, in a, in a computer room. Uh, we do it in live, setting rooms. Okay, where humans are actually. What you call I, I are actually involved in it. Okay, so it's very authentic. We have human trials. So these are different things. Swimming, we have done. Just to show you data science in swimming. In the past, to measure forces, we use robots. But right now, my, oh, my colleague did a PhD in robots. Huh? But right now, he came to RP. He has used actual hands. Okay, to do it, and just to use little pressure sensors to do it. And he got very good results uh, over there. But that one is in theory. Uh, and to operationalize it, machine le learning is a way where you can streamline and build a model out of it. Okay, so you've done something and we partnered actually uh, the Japan Institute, Singapore Sports School, as well as the Swimming Association. That time was mainly with uh, Ang, Ping, Ang Ping Xiong. Uh, okay. So, at the end of the day, as I mentioned, uh, data science is used to help to actually move it faster so that calculation can be done on the fly uh, etc the swimming uh. we also do it in uh, socks you know but not so contextualized with singaporeans uh. the auntie uncle akron all this will not want to wear socks but in europe that's why we partner pa partner the university of can't pronounce that Givastia, sheffield Hallam university and ntu uh, to, to do this and we found that you know actually when you wear this sort of uh, socks with compression at certain strategic places it will give you a better sensation for seniors so that it will improve their what you call the balance sense to avoid falling down okay that was the, the aim of it but we use machine learning to really understand the cause of it or identify the inside Get more insights to the factors. Okay, so also do on stress, we do on glucose, we do on wellness. Okay, let's just share you. Uh, and since we'll play that, that, that video again, I don't know, <laughs> the famous video or, or the infamous. Hold on. Excessive stress increases the risk of cardiovascular diseases. Traditionally, the salivary cortisol has been extensively used to measure stress level. However, this laboratory testing is not easily accessible to the public. As a result of this, there is a surge of needs to explore a more convenient and less costly method to measure stress, such as using photoflipismography PPG technology. Republic Polytechnic's wireless stress monitoring system consists of a wrist-worn wearable device based on the PPG technology. The wearable device picks up pulse signals from the user. The pulse signals are then transmitted to a mobile application for analysis using the algorithm developed by Republic Polytechnic. The stress level is then presented using color zones for easy interpretation. Users may continuously monitor their stress levels. The 
this system offers a complete solution to monitor stress levels of users with a simple wearable device and easy monitoring. Contact us today for more information. Okay, I mean, <laughs> you can see that the data science actually helps uh, in making it a reality. Uh, uh, behind it, the soul behind it was data science. Uh, I mean, collecting all these things is quite straightforward. I mean, devices are there just to collect your heartbeat, everything. But it was the data science that was able to differentiate and sift out, you know, the essential points, okay? And to make sure that it's valid. So, uh, this is one example uh, that we had. Uh, how we did, like, from IP partnering uh, KK Hospital, as well as Activate, the right partners, because at the time, the variables that was very happening then, uh, it was the uh, Singapore Step Challenge. You know, Singapore Step Challenge, you wear the watches. So Activate is the main company that does it. So we partnered them and be able to commercialize it. And while doing it, this was for glucose. We also realized that, you know, there was a secondary uh, discovery as well, SPO2. And luckily, at that point in time, there was also, also COVID-19. So the, they also partnered somebody to uh, try to commercialize this SPO2 in the watches for COVID-19 as well. Yeah, so it's like, a, like you know, X-ray, right? It was not intended, and you suddenly found that, oh, this is called X-ray. Yeah, so we also found that SPO2 could be used. Okay. So at the end of the day, and see these are all the wellness things that we coincidentally, uh, was not intentional. Uh, we found that we did blood pressure, or the blood pressure, all these things, we was very bulky things. Uh. You want to measure 24-7, wow, very bulky, very expensive. You want to wear this on your hand 24-7, also cannot. Uh. Then the glucose, every day you have to prick, etc. So all this very bulky. How nice if you can just put it into your watch only, that's all. So this was our dream, actually not our dream. We do a lot of things and we were able to put it onto the watch. By measuring all these things, actually no, by measuring just only your heart rate uh, signal, we can actually predict all these things. Okay, and we have actually, what we call, uh, commercialize it or license it to our partners as well. Okay, so what is so special about this is that it's algorithm based and it's compatible, as I mentioned before, with any devices that you have. Yeah, because like I mentioned just now, uh, Fitbit, you asked me, can you use your, you know, uh, uh, can I get your algorithms to put on my, on my, what you call the Xiaomi watch? They will say cannot. Okay, not because they don't want to share. If they want to share, the algorithms is not primed to accept. Ours is like sort of like open source. Okay, you can use it for anyone, and it's supposed to be for the community. Okay, and all you need is just a bit of calibration at the end. Okay, I would say a bit, but some uh, calibration. I think all watches you need calibration uh, to make sure that, you know, that is uh, tuned to the, uh, what you call the hardware at the end of the day. Okay, so we've done all this, and also it's, it's uh, validated in human trials. Uh, okay. Some of the watchers you ask them, hey, can you tell me what have you done? They will tell you, no, they won't tell you anything. They remain silent, uh, conveniently silent. Yeah, most of the time, I think most of it is done in-house, in the lab. They do a simulation, all these things, you know, simulation. Ours is literally, we do it with real human people, uh, but they have to test whether it's valid or not, okay, using data science. So at the end, you know, okay, just to share with you, the knowledge that we have, I uh, ask Raymond over there. Yeah. Uh, what happens to it? What's the big what all this knowledge, how does it translate back to training? Is something happening? Yes, we have uh, data science and machine learning and in RP we do it within the specialist diploma in sport science and wellness. We also have one I, I believe also in data science, programming in data science using R or Python, okay, just specific to it. But for this one, I want to emphasize this because data science should not be used alone. La. It must be used in the right context. La. Otherwise, it's like a, like you learn mathematics. Uh, okay, so how do you apply it? But mathematics in sport science, okay, will be maybe biomechanics, maybe mathematics in economics is like statistics, you know, something like this. So we try to do it with some context to it, okay? And this one, of course, 
is catered to you know a small outfit uh, like your SME or your one man show or your one person how can you use data science for you one person however if you want it to be like more in a corporate situation we also have this thing called up and coming uh, which my colleague there and may not have seen if I spoke to the School of Informatics we are trying to come up with a stackable professional certificate in this where they cater you know different modules you can choose say in fintech in what, uh, what you call uh, logistic etc and all these things okay yeah so with that i thank you yes <laughs> you go for session this i did in 15 minutes <laughs>